So Desert Palm Achievement Award, that sounds like a retrospective of just the most amazing work ever. You certainly have made some great films over the years. What do you think it was about the King's speech that made people say? Um, I think the, the magic of storytelling is, is a, it's a bit of a mystery. When a, um, we timed this well, didn't we? It's um, taking a story that you think you don't care about and making you think it's about you. It's something not a great novelists pull off, you know. Good filmmaking can do, and it's... I, I still haven't quite solved the mystery of this, but it's just a, a, a cracking good story. It's, um, it's about very real people, and they literally are real people. And I think the fact that it's rooted in, in truth, in, in the historical fact, um, means that it has eccentricities and, and, and quirks about it that you wouldn't think up. You know, Tom Hooper said this, the director, and, you know, the, the fact that Bertie has to give his speeches, that the king has to give his speeches, not in the room, it looks as if he's giving them in, but in a back room, standing up with a window open, which you would counterintuitive for radio, you know, with his jacket off, with a desk propped up on school books, uh, redecorated personally by the therapist. Now, that, we understood that because we found the diaries of the therapist, and that's exactly what they did, because that's what the king needed. We wouldn't have thought that up. Now, that's just one example of all sorts of little textual details that I think it, that fills it up. And, um, you know, I've, I've, read, I've read all kinds of books which I think, you know, this area of life wouldn't interest me. And by the time you're 10 pages in, n nothing could interest you more. And I think it has that quality. You said that it's about finding a role and finding in it somewhere that makes you believe that it's about you. Was mm -hmm. there anything about this role that you could identify with or that you did by the end of the filmmaking oh, process? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's hard to decide what. Certainly not being a member of the royal family, um, but maybe that's all a bit of a myth anyway. If you're a member of the royal family, you may not feel like a member of the royal family. In many ways, you, you just, you know, you feel like a person with a person's struggles and uh, your domestic problems are still domestic problems. Um, this is about a man who's consigned himself to the shadows. Uh, he's reached midlife, having written himself off. Um, and he struggles to communicate. He has problems with intimacy. Now that, you don't have to be, you know, the second son of the heir apparent in 1937 to have those problems. That list of problems can apply to an awful lot of people. And, um, I think there are certain things which are contagious in storytelling. I think fear is contagious, um, as is laughter. Um, you know, if a, a very, very frightened person can make you feel frightened. Um, a, a, you know, a, a, a very witty person will make you laugh. And those things are sprinkled through the story. A very warm person makes you feel warm. And I think part of the magic of it, frankly, is, is, um, is Jeffrey Rush's character. I think, that, I think that's largely why it works as well as it does. Otherwise, it would, it would be a long catalog of suffering. And Jeffrey is like a guardian angel. He's the person you long for as your guide and your teacher and your mentor and the guy that's got your back and, and somebody that will never give up and will look out for you. However, you know, even if you treat him badly and, and, and reject him, his, you know, reject his help, He'll come back, and uh, and Jeffrey has this extraordinary warmth and humor and slight sense of mischief, you know, even in the most serious circumstance. It's more than a slight sense of mischief, and I, I think he's, um, in some ways, I, I really think he's he's the heart of it, and, and why it works so well. It sounds like this was a group experience. Do you find that it's more interesting to be a part of films in which you're really brought up by other supporting characters or even ensemble pieces? I was just thinking of one of my favorite movies that may not be quite as serious, but uh, Love Actually is really a movie that strikes a chord with a lot of people because, as you said, they can see themselves in any one of those characters. Yes, it's certainly easier um, if you're working with a group. Because you feed, we feed off each other. I mean, you get a lot of it for free, really. If, if you've got a brilliant actor opposite you, you know, I think there's a, there's a myth among uh, bad actors that a, a good actor will show you up as bad. It's not true. A good actor will always make you look better. But it's also more fun. Um, you actually can thrive on that energy. You can feed off it. And uh, it's, so much of it's a free ride if you've got somebody wonderful opposite you. <coughs>
you know, uh, you're right. I mean, I think um, you know, uh, love actually was a cocktail of, of different energies. Um, you know, the film I did last year, Single Man, was a very solitary experience most of the time. But when Julianne Moore showed up, or when the, when the guys showed up and we had those scenes, suddenly it was a walk in the park. The scenes I had on my own, I had to almost invent the, my opposite number. You know, you still have to react to something, but it has to be imaginative. Um, King's Speech, I never had that problem. I always had Helen von Carter, Guy Pearce, Jeffrey Rush, or somebody. And, you know, I had a few things to work out for myself, but most of it I was just surfing on, on what they were able to give me. You did a great job surfing. Thank you. So thank you so much, Thanks. and I wish you all the best in the upcoming award season and lots of strength and energy because I know it's just starting for you. Thank you.